Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 19 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic that how to create or identify the trainer competence. Well, if you look into our day to day life, there also we always look with respect to the competence of the person. So, for example, you want your child to have some tuition. Now, you want to know that who is the best teacher who is available in the market and you want your child to get training only from that. Or maybe you are not well and you have to be operated. So, you want to understand that who is the best doctor who is in the city and you want yourself to be operated only by that doctor. So, it means knowingly and unknowingly we always want the teacher or maybe whomsoever is at a certain level should be the best in its class. Something similar happens in the industrial environment also. Wherever we are getting any training, we want that the trainer should be competent. Now, when we talk about competent or competency, it consists of two key words, knowledge and skill. So, unless and until a trainer has got both the knowledge and the skill, it is not possible for trainer to deliver to the best of the quality. And when I say knowledge, it means the trainer should have knowledge about that particular subject. Say for example, somebody is giving a training with respect to say measurement system analysis or statistical studies or project management. So the person should have knowledge about that. But then second part is also equally important that whether the trainer knows how to deliver that training. Because when a trainer is giving a training, there may be different kind of people who are maybe in front of the trainer. So whether the trainer is able to adapt himself to that environment. So the soft skills, how to deliver that plays a very, very important role. And at times it is being observed that there are people who have got tremendous knowledge, but then still they fail to deliver because they don't know how to communicate with the participants so that they can get the best out of it. Say for example, let's take an example, a very simple example of Microsoft Excel training. Now for that particular training, it's very important that the trainer should not only have the knowledge about Microsoft Excel, but apart from that, trainer should also know how to communicate with the people. There can be some people who may not know anything about the computers. There may be some people who may be using Excel regularly. So the trainer should know how to make a bridge between the two things. So that's the first key thing very, very important. Now that brings point number two, that why trainer competency is important. So generally there can be three key things that why the competency of trainer is important. The first and the foremost important thing is that it is important that the trainer should be able to impact the participants by giving the particular training. Secondly, the training should help the business performance unless and until it is helping the business performing, it is not going to serve any purpose. And third and the most important thing is the training should be able to fill the participants understanding and that particular improvements can happen with that particular training. Now, it's very important to understand that whenever somebody is coming for any training now it can be an online training it can be a physical training it can be maybe an open house training in some hotel or it can be a in-house training in any company in all the possible cases whenever a trainer is going for a particular training there is a very high possibility that the participant who are sitting in front of him they may have some basic knowledge about that particular subject so whenever the trainer will start the training the participant will have something in their mind and they just want to judge that whether the trainer is actually competent and can deliver as per their expectation or not. And even if that is not a case, then still they have some pre-notions, some preoccupied notions about a trainer. And initially the first half an hour, one hour goes whenever the trainer has to prove that yes, I am competent to deliver the training. Then second very important aspect generally in most of the training is that the, the participants who are coming for the training, they are a mixture of maybe low, medium and high. So irrespective of how good you can try, but still you will find a mix of participants. Now when you get a mix of participants, 
that becomes a huge challenge for the trainer that how the deliver how the trainer can deliver to into the person who has at this level a person at this level and a person at this level because unless and until the trainer is able to adapt to these different levels there is a very high possibility the training may fail and that actually happen in most of the cases so let me give you some examples with respect to that that there can be different scenarios with respect to the training and how what happens when such kind of scenario happens so let's consider the first scenario and in the first scenario let's assume that the trainer should know that what kind of questions the trainer has to ask the participants that as i said that there are different level of participants so what kind of question the trainer should ask which participant if the trainer is going to ask a very difficult question to a person who has very less knowledge about a particular subject there is a possibility that that particular participant will lose the confidence and similarly if the trainer is asking a very simple question to a person who is very bright as a participant then that person may also think that no no the trainer is not very good and that trainer is not able to understand my potential so it looks to be very simple but very important thing for the trainer to take care that what kind of question should ask because if the questions are asked in the right manner in the appropriate manner there is a very high possibility that the result will be good then with the advent of covid there are a lot of online training which are happening now if i take the example with respect to india north part of india and south part of india so in north part of india people are more comfortable in hindi in south part of india apart from the regional language people are more comfortable in english now the trainer is not able to balance between english and hindi there is always a possibility the training will be a failure irrespective of how good the trainer is so it's very important at this stage to either to know that what kind of mix of the participants will be there to communicate that training will either be in hindi or, or in english or the trainer has to use hindi and english in such a way so that the people from both the regions can manage effectively and third a very important a, a logical example is with respect to those trainings wherein the participants are just seeing the ppt the powerpoint presentation and the trainer is just reading those powerpoint presentation and expecting the participants to understand now there is a very very high possibility that at that time participants may lose the interest because in case they have to only read the ppt they can always do it with the training material so it's the role of trainer to see how to engage the audience how to use the powerpoint presentation in such a way that people should look forward that what is going to come in the next powerpoint presentation if that is not happening then whatever is going to happen it will result in a failure and it will not lead to any such thing now it brings the point number 3 how to measure the training or the trainer competence now there can be different ways it can be a formal way or there can be informal way in which the competency of a trainer can be gauged one of very popular way of doing is ttt train the trainer that is one of the way in which the trainers are qualified to become a trainer and then it is regularly being reviewed that yes whether their competency is working correctly or not there can be another very simple way which is generally being used wherein we are talking about competency in four parts education experience training and skill and based on that it can be seen that whether the trainer is competent to deliver a particular training or not let's give an example again the same example which i said in the beginning about microsoft excel now let's again take this four components education experience training and skill so what can be the requirement with respect to that so when we talk about education so the education can be a certified course in microsoft excel or maybe a diploma in computer science secondly when we talk about experience well it can be two years hands on experience by using the microsoft excel thirdly when we talk about training well it can be train the trainer or it can be on job training and then lastly when we talk about skill this is the most important thing the trainer should understand the expectation of the participants the trainer should know how to modify the training according to the participants and how to engage the trainees throughout the training 
then apart from that another good way to find out whether the training is effective or not with respect to the trainer perspective the kick patrick model can be used here also which is four levels the first level is talking about the reaction the second level is talking about learning the third one is about behavior and the fourth one is talking about the impact so when we talk about level 1 primarily immediately after the training a feedback is taken with respect to the trainer that how good the trainer was whether the trainer was able to deliver as per the expectation of the participant or not that can be level 1 when we talk about level 2 it is with respect to the knowledge like there can be a pre test and a post test so maybe on a pre test the average scorecard is say coming out to be 60%. Now after the training has been delivered, again another test is being taken to understand that whether trainer has been able to impart the knowledge to the participant or not. And say if it is 70% or 80%, so it means there is an enhancement of 10 or 20%. Then comes level 3, it is talking about the behavior. Now when the participant has gone back and now started working day to day basis, whether the trainer, whether the participant has been able to use that knowledge effectively at the place where that person is working or not, that's part number three. And then level four is talking primarily with respect to the impact that whatever has been thought in the beginning that this is what is expected from the participant, whether that participant has been able to implement that particular thing, say for example, the MX Excel, whether the participant has been able to use it effectively and giving what is expected by the management from that. If that is happening, then we can say that yes, that there is an impact for the training. Now, talk about some of the industry challenges with respect to the trainer competence. The first and the foremost challenge is how often the top management actually feel the importance that trainers should be competent for whatever they are delivering. The second important thing is that whenever a trainer is being identified for giving any training in the organization, is it actually based on the competency or maybe based on the seniority or the designation? Because this is what actually happens. And the third and the most important thing is how often the organization have a system to identify the competency of the trainer and they periodically review that whether the trainer is upgrading their knowledge from time to time or not. Because it is generally been seen that many of the trainers, they are themselves not competent, but they give training on a particular subject, even if they have not received any training with respect to that. So if I do a summary, I talked about what exactly is trainer competence, why the training competence is important, how to verify whether the trainer is competent or not. And in the last, I talked about the, some key industry challenges with respect to that. My next video will again be in line in the series of training and in that I am going to talk about how to identify the training needs. Well, regularly I am getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping you to understand your expectation. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand a little bit more about this video, you will find a link below. If you click that, you will find a blog there and there you will find this information in much more detail. And in case you think these kind of videos and blogs are useful, you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. Thank you.